Hello everyone and welcome to the second webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. While we wait for everyone to finish joining, I'll launch a polling question. You'll have about 30 seconds to answer about how much you think the Apply Many visualization aids in design and then I'll show the results. Okay, it looks like we're mostly fans of the Apply Many visualizations, so I'm hoping everyone will get a lot out of today's webinar. Let's get into it. Our 12D training webinars will showcase common industry challenges and take a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D model software. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D model users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D model. We also run regular training courses all around Australia and New Zealand. See our website for more details on these or indicate in your post-webinar survey that you'd like to be contacted about this or in-house training. We'll be running these webinars regularly and recording them for posting on our website and on YouTube. Our first six webinars from our Industry Solutions series as well as the first webinar from our training series are already available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights. Today's webinar on visualization will be presented by Peter Tainton, who has over 20 years' experience in various facets of road design. He has been engaged in large projects for several major councils and government road authorities. Over the last 15 years, he has worked closely with our programmers in the implementation of a variety of design features within 12D model. These include the super alignment and design speed tables, construction subgrade detailing, design geometry components, overlays, pad design interface, and of course, visualization. This training webinar will demonstrate several aspects of 12D visualization. Tin render settings, adding textures to your design, Extrusion library, creating line marking and guardrail, creating a timeline, using cameras and 3D objects such as cars, placing 3D objects, vehicles, houses and trees, creating intersection traffic signals and median lighting, and movie creation for final presentations. Over to you, Peter. Thank you, Lisa. Welcome to our presentation. Visualization within 12D can vary in complexity but you always endeavour to convey the aspects of your design from prelim through to the final presentation. Visualisation not only allows the client to visualise what the completed project will look like, but can also play a major role in the understanding between designers and engineers. Visualisation tools are varied within 12D and begin with the ability to drape a raster over an existing survey terrain or triangulation. Applying many functions in the road design automatically creates polygons for every string in your design. The polygon colour is then used to colour each triangle within the triangulation. There's a large selection of visualisation colours available and the user can create their own. 12D also has a selection of texture files that are mapped to these viz colours. The textures include grass types, asphalt surfaces, concrete, sand and rock etc. Again, textures can be added by the user. There is also a choice of extrusions that can be easily set via a map file in your design. These extrusions include general line marking, guardrail, wire barriers and fences. Extrusions are also combined with billboards. This combination is used in the placement of general traffic signs, traffic signals and houses. All available from the library and simple to place in your visualisation. Trees, shrubs and street lighting are also available. The presentation side of things includes the usual screen captures, but more importantly the real-life drive-throughs and timelines. The timelines can specify not only moving or stationary objects and target, but display cars, trucks and buses. Trees, shrubs and vehicles are also meshes and can be placed and all viewed in the mesh library tool. Cameras can be set up on string paths or be floating, allowing the user to zoom and orbit during the timeline. There are even options to record two flow flood scenarios and apply a time warp to speed up the results for viewing. 
real-life construction processes or scenes can be achieved with the use of chains or macro within the, within the timeline. 3D design features like bridges, etc. can be imported using formats like FBX, OBJ and 3D DWG. The solids are converted to tri meshes within 12D, which like the triangulation can have textures applied. More detailed design features like stormwater drainage, sewage networks and general services can also be displayed in the visualisation, even though the VIS module is not necessary to achieve this. In our project we have a triangulation and a raster. In our perspective view we have our shade toggled on so you can see the coloured designed uh, surfaces and also the uh, existing triangulation. Under our team render settings we can go to our survey and set our raster. The raster is then draped on top of the triangulation and again shows with the shade toggled on. The other design triangulations is our two uh, highway lanes, so we've got 12T texture, set that, and also now applies a texture. The other triangulation, again apply the texture. So the visualization colors and the polygons are generated by your uh, by your apply mini. If we go back to look at the colors inside 12D, again there's a variety of vis, of vis colors available and under the texture map file we can go directly access to the colors and right click and access the textures that are available. So it's simply just a matter of matching the texture to the colour. This is quite a large triangulation, so to, to increase speed during our demo of the internet, we will we'll remove the raster and uh, just set a 12D texture to our uh, survey sur surface. Also, the tins that are available there are just uh, uh, tins on standalone tins. So we're going to then add in a super tin. So look exactly the same, but the super tin is a combination of the three triangulations. Now we're in our design strings. You better see the extrusions that have been uh, mapped through our uh, apply mini map file. Get our design job. We get the function for our row. This is a model for the polygons, and under the miscellaneous is a mapping file. That mapping file not only maps the names of your design strings to colors and line styles for plan, but also under visualization, library extrude, you can then go through and select a extrusion and apply that to the particular string. So inside here we've applied uh, uh, lane lines here, um, broken lines and also a Griffin barrier. The latest addition of tri measures in 12D also allows the creation of objects such as pavements, curves and barriers. So the barrier shape can be easily drawn and uh, used in a snippet in your MTF file to form a extrusion type uh, feature um, as shown here. If we look at the barrier shape, we're going to now create a, a snippet file and use that in our, in our apply design. So it's under design, MTF, we go into snippets and we've got create tri mesh. So I'll give a name, tri mesh colors are after the viz colors. So we're going to grab concrete and we're going to call it barrier. So it allows to, you to draw a profile. So any profile at all that you can draw, it will then be able to create the, the tri mesh and you can apply that to your design. So an end color. So we'll select an end color for our barrier and select our barrier. Um, there are colors you can set for each segment. But in this case here, we'll just go and set the color for our viz concrete for the entire um, uh, barrier. 
You can select indices. You can also have string name plus vertices indices or text and point ID numbers. This relates to the names of the strings that get created. So we go back to our design. And on the right side, this is where we then apply the snippet. So the snippet has the, the name and the colors that I specified. And I now say I want to attach it to a design string called ESR. And there's my barrier. On the um, left hand side of the road, there's also um, snippets used for the pavement, for the AC pavement. And these are available in the 12D library. And again, you specify a name, a color, and which strings in your design you're, you're attaching to, and what the depth of the pavement is going to be. So I now, for instance, for clarity, I'll take off the super tin and add in my design meshes for my AC services. I get something very similar. Again, the textures are applied to the uh, tri meshes as they are to the tin. In our normal process of using tri meshes for, for our design and also visualization, there are times when you get the design strings uh, from an external source or, an, or, a, or a, uh, another client and you don't have an MTF file or an apply many for those strings, but you can create a visualization from those strings. So on the strings tri mesh, there's an option called create tri mesh viz. I've already done this before, so we'll just read the file in because you can save this file and it will act like a recalc. So I'm able to pick the strings, so I pick the strings from the inside out. Um, I can use the color of that string for the texture applied to the tri mesh, or I can select my own and also can give it a name. So in that case there, you end up with a tri mesh triangulate or a tri mesh surface from strings that you had no apply many for. I'll add back in our super tin. The perspective view offers uh, not only a zoom and orbit, but a string drive as well. But before we drive, I'd like to be able to return to this position um, to be able to display certain things about my, my design. So there is a eye target uh, inside 12D, and that then saves the coordinates uh, of the eye and target at this time. Uh, you could save a default, uh, but it is also uh, easy to be able to uh, save a, and write a chain. So if I edit the chain here, we can use an option under the uh, execution called Option Manual, which just records just about any panel inside 12D. So if I bring up the I, I can simply just go capture data, pick the screen, and the button I want to run, the button is the view button. And I write that out and replace. So now I can, if I zoom around and get a little bit lost in the job, and I want to return to that position, I can simply just go to run chain I go to demo view and it takes me straight back to the views that I'm after. So the idea is you can create a lot of those views, name them for the uh, particular purpose they're at, um, intersection, uh, bridge, north, south, those sorts of things. So we now go for a drive down the road. Again, it's been saved with a default, so we're going for a drive. And we can just go right mouse button and stop. Uh, if we add in our 12D clouds, 12D clouds are available under the utilities clouds option. You just pick a point in the center of your job and they look like this. It's like a box around your project. Again, I'd either go back to driving or I can go back to my view again. There's also a, a sky dome available. If it's a sky dome, it creates a triangulation. So when you, if you use that one, add the triangulation to the perspective view, um, not the actual raster itself. Under the um, billboards, there's a roadside furniture. And a few of these different ones that you may want to use are for street lighting. 
So again, we can turn around and we can say we want a freeway light. Then we go and select our, our lighting for our road. Um, we can, rather than picking one at a time, we can go along a string. So we select a string like this. So we zoom in here and we pick what direction. So that the lights are always on the right hand side. We can simply say distance and I want them every 50 meters. So then go to the other side of the road. Again, we can select our string there, our distance. We can also add in a uh, speed sign. So the speed signs are available under here. So we're going to go up, we're going to select the 100k speed sign. I'm going to put it onto a model. The colour it asks for is just the back of the sign. The insertion point. I'm going to put that on the edge of our verge. And the angle you just measure, and that's point to point facing the actual sign itself. External features uh, sometimes are, are needed uh, during your design and required for visualisation, but they uh, have been designed externally, not in 12D. One of these features would possibly be a bridge. So as mentioned before, this is an external format file, the FBX, and uh, has been read into 12D. Um, once the bridge has been read in, it does normally require a helmet transformation in order to position the bridge in your uh, in your coordinates and at the rotation required. And again, we can look at our job and we can go back to our chains. We have a view of the bridge and also a chain of an overhead view. So they're just those uh, chain recordings that I showed earlier. You can also add your own uh, billboards rather than just the speed sign that we see here. So inside here we've got a, um, a billboard sign, uh, we've got a, it's information or an assignment we may have created, uh, a width and height, and we position the sign. Uh, if you put a, a point in your design, you can also adjust it in the uh, vertical using the, the uh, offset value. So now be able to place a sign up there. This actually uh, creates a sign and uh, attaches it to the point permanently inside your project. If you want to, if that sign is something you could use in other projects, you can then just go write it out to the billboards.4d file and uh, reuse that again, probably save it to your user. I now add in some other models. These are trees. Now they are billboard trees, um, so they don't take up much, uh, much space. Uh, it's only one point, so it's about uh, you know, nearly 800 type trees in here. Um, so those trees are by rather than placing them one at a time, uh, there is an option uh, under the utilities to go to forest. So inside my design, I've just specified some polygons. So I pick a polygon. And I simply just say a tin that I want to attach that to, which would be the super tin again. And I have a forest file. The forest files are also available in your library, so you get an idea of what they're, what they're about. If you open up, they just simply just go right click and grab the tree that you're after. And then um, the maximum height, uh, minimum, and the spread you want. So it does random number generation, it produces trees, trees that look a little bit more realistic. So when you want to do a, um, a drive-through and create a movie from the, um, uh, the perspective view, you simply just go up under Utilities, String Movie, along a string. 
Before you get to the stage here and not knowing where to drive your eye height target distance, you should also practice with a string drive here and then work out your, your positioning, your heights and what you want and transfer those to your movie presentation. So again, turn off any screen savers or anything like that. So when you go movie, the position you where you want to be, comes up with a compression ratio for your video. So full frame compression creates quite large files. So you may want to break your job up into certain drives, uh, only over a few hundred meters or something, and then uh, have different videos and you can merge those in things like Movie Maker or other uh, uh, movie production type software. Um, inside 12 Deeps for uh, another option is a Microsoft Video One, which gives you a little bit less compression quality, uh, but a lot smaller files. We're going to look at the um, meshes available inside 12D. So again, these meshes are under the mesh library. So you can go through and look at the types of vehicles. Uh, there's buses and trucks and so forth. You'll see the anchor points, these colored points under the uh, the tires and all the vehicles. So that means that they will then attach to the tin surface and follow that profile. So we look at a timeline. So if we go create and we add a, a thing they call a child. So there's different sorts of uh, timelines you can do. You can um, set up cameras, create 3D objects like the cars and, um, and uh, pass those down a linear path like a road center line. Uh, you can also have cars at fixed positions. Uh, you can run chains and things like that inside the um, timeline. Uh, you can also have static text displaying uh, road names and so forth uh, during that timeline. And, and also options for um, time warps for the uh, tube flow. Rather than go for all those, we do have uh, for the vehicles mainly is a quick timeline. So base is a quick timeline. Uh, we're going to look at just running a, a floating camera for at, at this stage. So I picked a road we want to drive there. We've got a couple of alignment strings here. And again, we've got the, the view that we want to do our viz in. We can set a speed for our road for our camera at the stage. And we've got a kelp time for that. This is actually going to do a camera, no actual vehicles at this stage. So I go append and write that file out. If I run the demo camera now, it will actually do the drive, but it does allow you to do this. So you're allowed to zoom and orbit around back and forth, which you couldn't do with a normal drive. So you can just set up a camera that will turn around and just drive down a road, not necessarily just playing any cars. So we go back to our highway view. So the other quick timeline here is the actual application of cars. So this time we want to drive and stay in this position so we're not going to have a floating camera. So again, we pick our alignment string. We've got several ones here, um, a north, south, across the bridge and so forth. We're just going to do stick to this side of the road. So again, we're going to look at uh, a view and the speed we want to drive at. Doing an anchor tin this time for the vehicles, so we pick a super tin and we go calc extends for the road. We want to set up some different um, uh, groups of cars, so we're going to group them together and tell them to start at different times. So there are some um, files here that we've saved off for different grouping of vehicles, and we can read that in. There are some library ones available for you as well. If you populate, we're going to set where this is in relation to our alignment string in the middle of the lane and we can go append. We just replace this one here. So you keep on going append and when you're finally finished with all the different groups that you may want you can then write the file out. So in this case here I might want some different sort of cars. So I read that and I might want to put them in the other lane. So that will be minus 1.5 instead. I want it to be a group. So I change that to group 2. I want to start about four, three seconds later. So they're a little bit staggered. Append and then write the file. So now if we go back to our perspective view and we'll run our demo cars. So basically the cars are going to run down the road and again they're, they're, they're staggered uh, with a random number to make them look a little bit more realistic. And they'll then drive down the road for you. So 
So again, I've actually created a timeline here for you. So we have uh, using the same same option. We have roads on uh, cars on this side of the highway, that side of the highway, and also over the bridge. So during that timeline, we've also uh, used the options here to swap back and forwards to the different views because they're just options that you can run inside the chain and start at a certain time. So if you play the major traffic one, so basically it's going to run through the same uh, deal. You'll see the cars driving down the highway here, but it'll also be vehicles on the right-hand highway. And again, there will be cars coming out the top of the uh, bridge. So at a certain time, we'll then um, activate the chain for the change of view. So then change from the freeway drive view through to the bridge, and then continue on for, for 10 seconds or so at this view, and then change to another overhead view, and then back to a different freeway type view. This gives you the ability to be able to swap around and make the, uh, the drive or the presentation a little more interesting, or even highlight different things as you drive. And if you do make a mistake with some of these things, sometimes you might pick the wrong string or anything, it's not too hard to go back and just run them again. So this one here, I'm running through the process, picking the different um, uh, strings, and I forgot to change the um, uh, tin surface from uh, super tin for the bridge uh, to the bridge tin. So obviously we're going to get a little bit different vehicle um, uh, driving under the bridge instead of on top of the bridge. And as I said, it's not too hard to just uh, simply redo. Or you can even do a search and replace in a text editor uh, for the tin and change it to the bridge tin. If you look at the recording, the recording of these things is very similar to the drive that we showed before. So instead of walking right on play, you just pick the word play and you select the actual movie that you wanted to, or the timeline you want to play, and then you go to movie, say yes I want a movie, uh, give it a name, the view you want to drive, and uh, frames per second. So when you go run, you get the same video compression panel that comes up. Again, uh, the ones with, um, uh, can be larger files, or you pick the uh, Microsoft video uh, for the bit smaller file. We're now going to look at a, a subdivision project and uh, with a little more detail uh, for a uh, signalised traffic intersection and then some more detail on subdivision including um, houses and uh, trees and shrubs and park vehicles etc. This will include the use of uh, design tools such as components, apply minis, island string creations, line marking, the placement of traffic signals and finally a small timeline depicting some traffic movement. So again, this is actually a component that's being placed. So again, the component is not the complete solution to your design, nor is it the complete answer to the visualization, but it's also a good start. So on our, on our design road toolbar, there's a, a traffic island creation. This allows you to pick the, the, the components, so you can turn around and select whatever type of um, uh, island that you want. And you go reference, you pick the direction. So you turn around and set what type of island or barrier that you might want, you might type B, and go process. So again, if I go to my perspective view, that's how I can start to build up my islands. So that's a good tool just for, for running those islands for you. In the design part of it, you can go to your apply, apply mini manager. Again, we can then pick our curb returns, we're only interested in these external ones here. So the view on display, just might add that to demo traffic. So again, we want to be able to have a template 
We're just going to do our standard curve. We're going to do a triangulation for our job and create update. So look at our job, there's our services around the outside and here's our design around here. So we're starting to build up our job. Under the visualization, there's also an option for line marking. The line marking looks at the, in this case here, the components, and it's going to produce a, uh, a new model. And we're also going to be able to drape it onto a tin surface at the same time. We're going to map the line styles we may have here uh, to the extrusions. And that's a, a, an option in 12D. They both have the same name and they're easily mapped. So go to our job here, we've now got this. We add in our perspective view. We now have some of the extrusions that were uh, used. Some of the strings haven't come through because they were just line style ones, but the ones that do have the extrusions are now mapped uh, through line style to extrusion. If we go back to our arrows, so in that case here we can change over to a model for the arrows. We want those arrows on a different models so we can triangulate them and then add them as part of our super team. So we drop down to our pavement arrows. Again, you can just place one if you want to. So you could just place one particular arrow, do the orientation. There's also an undo here. But you can also then do multiple ones. So if you say you want three and they're 25 meters apart and the uh, offset 1.75, if you want to do a start, so I might want the arrows to start here and you pick the direction towards the intersection and it creates the arrows for you. So on the other side of the road, I might want to do a left turn. Again, the offset, the point you want the arrows to start from, pick the direction, pick towards the center of the intersection, and it'll now produce the left-hand arrows for you. As I said before, the, um, the final intersection then comes up like this. So I've actually then um, triangulated the, the arrows, uh, created a, a triangulation for them, added in some chevron, a few extra line marking that the, the uh, line marking macro didn't do for me. Again, when you do triangulate the, the um, uh, arrows and pavement arrows and chevroning, make sure they're in a, uh, another tin and add it as part of the uh, super tin. We also can look at um, the application or the uh, placement of traffic signals. We have choices here, we have a signal post, we have mast, mast arms, and then once you have those mast arms, you can also then attach different lantern options, red, uh, left turn, right turn, those sorts of things. So I pick a, a point on the screen. So also when it when it applies that, if you look under the utility snaps, it's snap into a tin. The tin we want here is actually the traffic design rather than the other job. So again, we can actually then just delete these if we place them and there's something else that's wrong. Okay, we come back into placement. We go to our perspective view and here's our oh, we have no other design service here but it's sitting on where, where the center of the, of the medium would be then we can add our lanterns so we'll turn around and add some lights like that so we just it asks you to pick the, the lantern then it allows you to do a rotation so the rotation here dynamically allows you to position the uh, lantern Again, there is also a rotate, so I can pick the lantern and rotate it around to there. So I was placing those, we can also place the, the, the outreaches. So I go to a outreach like that, place it over here. Again, I can zoom and I can get this to rotate around and position it in relation to the traffic. 
Again, I can then grab the larger lanterns. I pick the arm, and it also allows me to rotate around a position for the oncoming traffic. So there is an option, they are grouped together. So not only can you delete them, you can also rotate them. So you can rotate the entire thing. So it all, it's all grouped together as one object. And you can also then move the entire thing around as well. This is our final intersection. The final intersection has the, um, the line marking done in a complete set of traffic lights. So again, under here, we can go and do our normal drive through, which is what we showed before by just using the quick timeline, selecting a um, alignment, and then driving down the road. Be a good idea actually to um, stop at the intersection. So different options available in the uh, path option for the car, and instead of just a linear string, which is a my alignment string here, you also can drop down and select a a transformation string. So what the transformation um, string? Big pardon, it's a um, change string. So the training string allows me to pick my original path. And it also allows me to pick a what we refer to as a chain string. So the chain string is drawn, starts at 0, 0 which is the time origin. And then um, you draw a string that then goes from say 50 naught up to 175, change 175 over nine seconds. So it tells you down here that the String to be drawn is X is um, time and Y being the value of the change. So I've just drawn a string that represents uh, where I want to be at a certain time. So here I'm just uh, staying uh, at change 175. So I'm stopping at the intersection and then continuing on. So go back to our intersection and we're going to run this time. The car will then come down, it will then stop at the intersection and then continue through. So in the, um, the doing a lot more than that, just rather one vehicle, we have lots of vehicles and we've also got some traffic lights here. Uh, so we will be in the trot timeline, we will be able to change from uh, red to green lights. So we go play on our traffic lights. See the cars pull up. You know the cars passing through. If you watch at the um, the lights at a certain time, will change from red to green. Just a small idea of what you can what you can do. Uh, again, it's using the, the chain to take and add off the lights on and lights off model, and then does a drive through. We're going to place some cars, houses and vehicles in our, in our next project. This is a subdivision job. All these have been placed meshes, uh, simply just like placing blocks and giving a, uh, a, a rotation or orientation. We're using the OpenGL plan view here. Um, so when you add these on and toggle your shade and um, solid on, you do see the vehicles and also the the actual um, trees, rather than just seeing a single point. So we need to, again, snap onto a surface. So again, we're gonna change the tin. We're gonna change it to our final surface instead. 
the utilities is a house option. So we can go and select different types of houses and place those. So I've already got one under our, I've saved off as a screen layout file just to speed things up. So we're going to do house number six and we go process. So again, if you don't um, uh, get the orientation wrong, you can always just go undo and then re-change re the orientation. So we go back to our visual view here. We've also got another chain. It just shows me where that house was placed. So as far as placing other things like the trees and so forth, they're just simply under the meshes. Again, under the mesh library, we have different options for park vehicles and so forth, but also under trees, gum trees and so forth, and uh, grasses and shrubs. And, uh, so it's all just a matter of uh, picking a point and a, uh, and a uh, and tin to anchor to. So I'm just going to place a, a mesh here. So we're going to place a tree. So we just say a coconut tree. Again, pick a point here. So we've got a model we're going to place this on. And the anchor tin. Okay, and we can go back to our other types of um, trees. So that's the idea of placing them. All those trees and all those houses are all just placed set with an orientation and uh, anchored to a particular tin. So you want to come down to a to a vehicle. Again, they can all be selected from your list. But if you do make a mistake, you can just go undo. In this case, you might have the orientation wrong. So let me just go undo. And then go and select the rotation in the Z. And it places a vehicle. So we then look at our timeline. Again, we have a list of alignment strings, some around the road, some turning in parking into, into um, uh, residences. So we go back to our subdivision view. And again, we can play our timeline. So this vehicle here is going to turn and drive into this driveway. So as it does in the timeline, we'll then have a chain that will add the car in here so you see the car during the complete uh, timeline because that timeline is actually finished. So we have cars driving in a road and cars coming in. They're all just driving on three different alignment strings and set to start at certain times. On top of that subdivision drive, there's also an option here. You can see with it, with it, um, uh, different ones start different times. I've got a camera. I can turn those on and off or enable them. Again, now you can run. So we're now looking at a, the camera. The camera is driving its um, uh, eye is looking at a fixed position, target position, sorry, and the eye is driving down the camera, down the actual camera string. It gives you a good uh, aspect on the, on the job rather than just looking stationary down the road. Now get another view. So this option here, we're going to look at the um, the construction ones. If you have a, look, have a look on the 12D website, there are some ones there for bridge constructions. And, and during those timelines, we're just simply adding on models that have different uh, things on them and building up the view as we go. So this one here is a timeline done in a similar fashion. So 
So it's as in the um, uh, takes their weights and trees, as in a pad surface, a bit of a dry view. There are there are some construction or mining vehicles available in the meshes. And we add the large unit block, then add the landscaping around. So this shows you that quickly you can just go through and just add in a uh, a couple of uh, different things. And as I said before, if we look at the edit on that, it's just simply running a timeline. And here's where it adds in the the, the type of view and then running change to add units, add slab, add grass, and add landscaping all at a certain time. So it just tells me that I want to add the, and run this chain at 13.5 seconds. Again, you just do the same drive type movie that we did before, uh, just by picking play and selecting your movie type that you want to do. So types of movies that we've produced here, again we've got our major traffic AVI that we ran before, that we showed you how to run before, so this is where it's actually completed, so again it runs through, swaps over, so it's quite good quality. The unit power construction. so forth. The unit plot that came in here was actually a FBX uh, file and then, uh, instead of having FBX with lots and lots of uh, points, um, thousands of points, uh, we asked for a OBJ. So inside 12D you can actually, besides inserting a mesh, you can also do a file rather than a library and grab an OBJ so that then that whole building is just one point rather than thousands of points. In the stormwater project, I haven't opened the project, but this is where you can actually blend a tin. So when you go into tin render settings, you can set a blending, which is a transparency, and you can then see the um, the objects or the uh, services underneath the tin. That concludes our presentation. Over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Peter. I think we've got time for a few questions that have come through. Uh, Vinny in New Zealand has asked, uh, how was the barrier profile created? Was this done via a template? This is the uh, the the concrete barrier was the, was a small profile that I picked. If, if I that's believe what you were talking about. earlier uh, on in the presentation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, you, you just draw a the shape um, on on a particular model, and naught naught would be the insertion point of the barrier. Um, so whatever shape that you can draw uh, as a as a superstring. Uh, you draw it at Nord Nord, and that's the profile that you pick. Great. Um, Vino is also asking: Is there a mesh for cyclists and pedestrians? <laughs> um, well, not not at the moment, uh, but um, uh, there has been a bit of an effort to uh, find some meshes that were suitable. Uh, but at this moment, we haven't we haven't got one. You, you, I'll, I'll probably write that down as a bit of a note. Difficult things to mesh, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and. Possibly. Anne from Sydney would like to know, are tri-meshes meant to replace extrusions? No, they're supposed to work hand in hand with, the, with extrusions. I don't think I'd like to create, so create a timeline or a, a tri-mesh that was uh, equivalent to that uh, griffin barrier or guardrails and those sorts of things. Um, so uh, it's horse for courses. Um, and uh, as we saw before, we can use the tri-mesh to create solid concrete barrier. We could have also done the same thing for, with the um, extrusion, uh, but uh, so they, they, they both work hand in hand. Great. And Mark in Brisbane has asked, what sort of things could affect a visualization performance? Well, mainly the the main thing to, to form that would uh, cause anything in uh, a computer program would be the the uh, hardware. So most people that buy machines nowadays uh, they're they're based on gaming specs and things like that. So uh, you would more than likely get a standalone graphics card and get a quite a decent graphics card if um, that's what you're after. Um, but um, it's the same old story if you. Uh, add a lot of things to to a view with thousands and sometimes millions of points, um, and you can't pan around very well and zoom very well. Then the same will be will apply for your visualization. So if you did add in, you know, uh, a huge triangulation, uh, then you may have a bit of an issue with um, the uh, the VSS where you break the job up 
um, and uh, look at it in a little bit more um, uh, context. Thank you, Peter. That's all we've got time for in the live Q&A today. Sorry to those whose questions we couldn't get to live. We'll be getting back to you individually afterwards. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars will be Creating Symbols and Line Styles on the 11th of May and 12D Field Measurement Rounds on the 31st of May. In case you haven't heard, we're also holding What's New in 12D webinars from the 24th to the 26th of May and we'll be continuing our Industry Solutions webinar series from next week. So do see our website for details of all of those. We'll keep updating the website with many more topics in coming weeks and also keep you posted through email and social media. Don't forget, we've also got our next 12D International Conference this July with the Associated Innovation Awards. The awards closing date is now the end of May, so if you haven't submitted your entry, you've still got some time. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.